Shalom, shalom, friends. It's an honor to be here today with uh, my teacher, Rabbi Danny Landis, who is the founder and Rosh Hashiva of Yashrut, of Yashrut. Check it out. Very important work and learning happening over there. And uh, it's great to see you again. So thank you for taking time to talk. It's uh, it's good to talk, and it's even better to do action. And that's why I love you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And me, you. Amazing. So, um Today, uh, many of us are worried, those of us who love Israel, those who live in Israel or visit very regularly or family there, um, about the direction of the government. And there uh, have been significant claims around extremism, um, racism, homophobia among um, prominent members of this new coalition. And first of all, do you think that's a fair claim? And what do you think are the threats that are kind of emerging here? Fair claim, they say it. <laughs> no problem in making any claims or assumptions or assertions or calumnies or lies about this. There are ministers who are coming in to become ministers who are homophobic, who are racist. And here the racism is against the Arab population. I have to break into this. You know, if you're going to have someone become the minister of the West Bank in, in terms of security, doesn't that person need to say, I want to make sure or in, to ensure the security of all residents? Right. He doesn't say that because right. he doesn't want to do it because he doesn't believe in that. And he's very clear that he wants the security for his people. And it's not just Jewish people. It's his particular type of real Jews who are ready to settle in a messianic frenzy. And if I sound like I'm in a frenzy, which I do, it's because I'm listening to this Mishagas, which is highly dangerous, not only to the Arab population, and I, don't, I hope that's a good terminology, it's not only dangerous to the Arab population, it's dangerous to Jews. What do we want? We want, we want a religious war in Israel? We don't want that. Yeah, that's very powerful. And so um, how does our how, how does our Torah move us to 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 experience this? I mean, you know, we're 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 so proud to have sovereignty and to have responsibility. And um and yet we we encounter something that's that appears so disgusting within something we're so proud of. I mean, how does the Torah move us to kind of you know encounter this? We have a professor, Eliezer Berkowitz, a great halachic authority and a great thinker, his, his argument for religious Zionism, and here he's arguing with those who were, who were Orthodox and anti-Zionist, his, his idea says, look, we now have, in two, after 2,000 years, the first time that we can take Torah values and put them into real action. Not just, not just the partial actions we were able to do when we were uh, we weren't empowered and we were only by ourselves and mostly could if they were if they could be manifest could be on a small communal basis here we could do policy the point was with berkowitz uh, professor berkowitz is 2000 years now we can apply torah values which means we haven't done it for 2000 years so no one knows the power we've been very much involved in all sorts of questions now in the uh, all sorts of questions which basically evolved on small communal issues or small ritual issues we were never involved with taking care of vast populations that are different than we are we'd have a shabbos goy in a in a synagogue and there's many good laws about about how do you take care of the non-jew who works in your home or works in the synagogue here's vast population so we have no and i think shmuley in many ways we've been a traumatized nation we went through we went through of anti-semitism and the culmination in the 30s and 40s what that meant uh the our Sephardic population went through they had their golden moments, but the golden moments were were short. So we have a kind of a trauma built built in us, and we, yes, and we haven't worked it out in terms of full peace and how to arrange that. So there's worries, etc. But that's one part. The second part is religious Jewry was not supposed to 
wasn't going to survive, uh, according to all the demographic and all the sociologists, both in Israel and America in the 50s and the, the 40s, 50s, it's dead. So now there's a triumphalism that comes, as, almost be, the, the almost the bends of coming from deep down and and rising to the surface and rising to the air. We haven't been able to catch our breath. This is the apology. I'm giving an apology, an analysis of what happened. But are we we are being failed by religious leaders such as myself? if I'm a leader, assume I'm a leader, just for this, assume I'm a leader, who have not talked seriously enough about it, have not entered the educational system, the religious Zionist educational system as it exists right now in Israel is horribly racist. The teachers are often uneducated. They are not, they do not have university, the religious teachers, don't have really good religious, don't have really good humanistic education. And this is what comes out from a, so we have right now a perfect storm to create and we're being attacked often. And there is terrorism. So there is fear. And and the history has been a difficult history. So right now we don't have the calm voices of reason who understand that in this generation, generations in which we're trying to have a more perfected society, we have to perfect the society for all of us. You have President of the United today, the President of the United States, a picture of him uh, hugging the uh, the wife of a of a tremendous uh, uh, woman basketball. They're, it's a gay couple. And at the same time, in the Knesset, we're having leaders who want to put down our population, gay people. They want to shove them into the corner. Our sisters, our brothers, in many cases, our children. We are the light to the nation. Let's start taking that seriously. Let's take the human rights that are in there. And what? And I won't take it from anybody. I believe in a strong. Any. I believe in a strong defense. I believe in strong, a uh, uh, strong chuppah and good weddings and all. I, you, I, 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 you want to put on two pairs of fill in a day? You do so. All that is great, but at the same time, take care of the poor, take care of the hungry, and don't, don't impose drastic determination. I can't express myself. Don't impose drastic solutions. I haven't even mentioned that the rule of law, which we brought to the world, is now being endangered because with a with an infantile notion of democracy that only the majority wins and that they're gonna, in a sense, get rid of the Supreme Court. We, who brought law, justice, equality, which would become theoretical notions that a rabbi can give a drusha, can give a sermon on on Shabbos. No, it has to be put into action. And who is taking it away from us is unfortunately, it's being led by, by an orthodox population that's divided into an orthodox population that's know nothing, that's the, the Haredi population. It's a no-nothing no, no situation. You don't need to know English, math. The, 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 the course that they, that they fear the most is a course called Ezra Chut, citizenship, which gives us you know, the basic mm -hmm. values of being a citizen. And on the other side, religious Zionists who believe that, that right now that uh, the Messiah is you know, almost at the door. And what does he want? He wants us to beat up other people. Mm -hmm. That will bring the Messiah. I have to know something. I know the Messiah. He doesn't want to come in such terms. <laughs> he told me that. So, so before we look forward about what, what we need, to, what we need to do right now, I want to look back for a moment. What changed over the last decade that we got to this point? Was this always the case, and it finally gained more traction and, and power? What changed in the Israeli population? What changed in religious Zionism, if anything, that we now have a Smotrich and a Ben Gavir and and I'm blanking on his name, uh, Moaz, uh, uh, Maus, 
you know what I'm talking about. Most. Most. Uh, and so, uh, you know, what changed that um, that we got we got to this point? There was uh, a full religious Zionism was led um, by leaders who understood that who understood that uh, life is valuable, all life, and that and that and that human ventures even the state of Israel was really always in a precarious situation. You never know how things are going to go. And they raised an idealistic generation, which believed, as I said before, that perfection will come. And they didn't sufficiently imbue within them that needs to be a perfection for all humanity. Can't just be a perfection for ourselves. And didn't tell them and here's the notion I'm trying to get to, that tragedy is always possible. We don't even want to say, say it right now. I'm, I'm, I, you see, I, I was screaming before, and now I can hardly say it. I don't want to use that word tragedy. But we can call tragedy, we can cause tragedy in people's lives, and we can cause tragedy in our whole endeavor right now. How? And they were smart. They knew that things will take, and certain areas will take their course. The, the religious Zionists right now, the leadership, is ready to do away with the diaspora. Okay, mm -hmm. who's going to stand up for us? They replied to me, some of the religious Zionists. I've been talking to people, the, the leadership. They're not so Zionistic. I said that maybe you're not so Zionistic, but I want to, they're not perfectly Zionistic as you are, or even a, as much as I am. But I want to tell you, that reform rabbi who, who has so many problems with Israel, when he talks to his or she talks to her congressman or congresswoman says, but you better take care of Israel. You have to make sure that Israel exists. You're going to take a couple of million Jews who advocate for Israel, in which politicians are worried about the Jewish vote, and cause them, besides the immorality of casting them away, cause them to work on the other side? This is just stupid. So when you're asking the question, what happened? They're not smart enough. Everyone has to be smart and they have to be sensitive and people have to be moral. And these are values. I don't know, the religious Zionists today and many of the religious things are just checking off the boxes and they have a formula for bringing the Messiah. That formula does not exist except in the minds of, uh, except in people who are losing their minds. The formula does not exist except to do the right, to do the good. That's the only so formula. Have, so with our enormous frustration and fear yeah. and anger, yeah. what do we do? With, what do we do now? Well, first of all, I think it's really important to call it out yeah. and call it out in all situations. And I'm not in favor of calling it out. Uh, uh, in the New York Times, I turned down an article. Yeah. Um, I'm not doing not doing that, but amongst ourselves, we have to do so. We have to uh, use economic uh, power that does exist in terms of yeshivot, et cetera, about how they teach that so long term. And we have to build our own uh, our own structure. We have to create, which we haven't done, and uh, you've started in certain ways, but you haven't done enough either is to create a new discourse of what does it mean to be a religious Jew. Mm -hmm. Okay, right, you know, I, ha I have my checklist, uh, you know, Shomer Shabbos, or at least going on that derech, uh, the direction of becoming Shomer Shabbos, and some basic morality, I have, but this now takes a much greater, much greater, and, and we cannot allow ourselves to fall asleep on this right now. And here's my last part with this. Those sensitive, modern Orthodox rabbis in America and in Israel, do you think they're not going to be on the hit list in terms of in terms of not being in terms of being disregarded, but not only disregarded, not to be able to come into the schools and talk and to lecture and to you know show the other way? They're on the hit list already. We have to understand what's happening right now. Am I pointing a finger? Sure, I am pointing a finger. Okay, I'm pointing a finger. I want the best for everyone. I also wish that we'd be secure and that we'd be smart and we'd be moral. 
And I think we're going to have to have a checklist like that from our side. Are you, are you advocating policies that lead towards life or are you advocating policies that lead to exclusion, that suffering of others, uh, isolation of yourself? Um, no, no, that's, that's not who we are. We need to go back and understand Rev Cook a lot better and some of the other greats. Friends, we've, we've been charged uh, to think about some really big questions today around what does it mean to be a religious Jew in the 21st century? What does it mean to be a religious Zionist today? What does it mean to exercise our Torah-rooted moral responsibility to call out extremism and racism and homophobia? And what does it mean to not be afraid and unite uh, in the diaspora and in Israel at this crucial moment to ensure the future of Israel's survival? By survival here, we mean it's moral survival and, and existential survival based upon uh, these decisions that are made today. Friends, check out Rabbi uh, Danny Landis' incredible work emerging right now. There's an op-ed coming out in the next day or two, um, which I will post below. And um, and check out and support Yashrut, which we will uh, post a link. If there's a link, <laughs> we will post the link as well. We're the, we're the last link. <laughs> Thank you so much. God bless.